benefit for them. MashaAllah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, inna ahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulil kareem, amma ba'd. Before I could answer this question, I would like to thank everybody, my brothers and sisters, who came to know about my health. And they were told, alhamdulillah, through the media that I was admitted for one night in the hospital. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. You can see, alhamdulillah. So, jazakallah khan for your duas. This is the life. We, as human beings, you have to go up and down. So, alhamdulillah, it's a test from Allah. But jazakumullah khan for your duas. Uh, the question that you have said is, uh, there are so many benefits to offer by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The number, for, the first thing is that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives their sins of the past, which is the hadith says, إِنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ يَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلُ That when a, <coughs> a non-Muslim, man or a woman, sincerely accepts Islam and says that I only will worship Allah, and that will be according to the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which he says that, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُحَمَدِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Then anything that this person, man or a woman, has done in the past, Allah will forgive that. This is the first offer that Allah gives to the person. And the hadith of Rasul that a non-Muslim, if he, he or she has any good status before Islam, uh, social status, uh, financial status, economical status, or you can say any, generally we know that it is uh, fame and name. So that is khiyarukum fil jahiliyati khiyarukum fil deen the hadith of Rasulullah that whatever the good status and famous status, respectful status a non-Muslim had before Islam before means in the period of jahiliyyah pre-Islamic days the same respect will be given and this person will achieve same sort of respect in Islam man or a woman and the third thing is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said that when a bad person, man or a woman, enters into Islam and does good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away the past sins and uh, rewards him further. But if a person is, he, he or she was bad in Islam, before Islam, and then he came to Islam and again that person is same as the way that person was in Jahiliyyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will double the punishment for that. So this is, uh, we have to be very careful with that. And this was uh, a, a group of Arabs, they came to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have got any caller or question? All right, no, no. Alhamdulillah. So a group of people, they came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, uh, because they addressed him as, Oh Muhammad, what Islam is going to offer us? Because we have committed fornication adultery, we have killed people, and we have worshipped the idols. So what Islam is going to offer us if we become Muslim? Mm -hmm. And what is the guarantee that we will be saved according to your faith that a person will be going into Jannah? Then he couldn't, Prophet ﷺ at that time could not give the answer. But Allah SWT revealed the verses from Surah Al-Furqan. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى أَثَامًا يُضَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا That Allah SWT is saying that the servants of Allah, the slaves of Allah, the servants of Allah, the Ibadur Rahman, are those that they will not uh, commit shirk, they will not do zina, and they will not kill anybody. But that after they have accepted Islam, so they will not fornicate, they will not kill anybody, and they will not do shirk. But if somebody does the shirk or any of these three major sins and then he or she repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and then renews the faith, means becomes a proper, you know, a Muslim giving the shahada and then starts doing good deeds in the life according to the teaching of Quran and Sunnah. Not innovation, no bid'ah, no, you know, uh, cultural thing. 
properly practicing Islam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised this is what Allah is offering to these people. And this is, was the answer of Rasulullah sallam to them. أُولَيْكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change even their bad deeds into good deeds. So this is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to understand with this, mashallah, my brothers and sisters who are watching us, Muslims and non-Muslims. This is what we don't promise anything. This is the promise of our Creator Allah. And this is the evidence we have from the Quran that anybody who has done wrong in his or her life before Islam then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the offer that Islam will take away all his or her sins of the past. Alhamdulillah, but the condition is that person should be Muslim for the sake of Allah alone. Alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah, the status, whatever the status was there in the jahiliyyah, Allah will give the same status. I'm talking about the good status, not the bad. Bad is already removed. Alhamdulillah. So this is, uh, I think it uh, answers your question, Hisham. Inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah, very happy to hear that your health is better. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, and that you're doing well, alhamdulillah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here with us today. Alhamdulillah. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you want to take part in today's show, uh, all you need to do is call us on 0203 515 That's 0203 Uh Sheikh, uh, before we take a question from YouTube, uh, I know it's a day of Ashura. Uh, so obviously, a lot of Muslims are going to be fasting. Um, there's about an hour left before Maghrib. So what are the benefits that, um, that can really help uh, sort of boost the brothers and sisters who are fasting and those brothers and sisters who are unable to fast but wanted to fast today? MashaAllah. First of all, we'll go with the first, uh, second part of the question that those people who wanted to fast, like this morning I got the call from a brother. He said that, you know, I totally forgot that today is the day of Ashura and I wanted to fast, but that was a long time I thought that I will fast. But... Yesterday, I didn't have any intention, and I didn't even know that today, Friday, will be the day of Ashura. And when I woke up for Fajr, I first thing I washed my face and did wudu and drank water. Mm -hmm. And now, 8 o'clock, I'm thinking, oh, today's Ashura. Then immediately, he called me and he said, Sheikh, what is my ruling of my fast? If I fast, I said, no, you can't fast. Can't fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't upset him. I said, there's a hadith in Sahil Bukhari that those people, Rasul Rasul visited some people who were bedridden and they were ill. And they were thinking of the same thing that if we would, uh, when we were healthy, sound and mashallah, when we were participating in good deeds and jihad and all that, now we can't do because of our health. Sheikh, we have a caller. Okay, so we'll, okay, we'll go to the caller. Salaam alaikum to Allah, brother or sister, you're live on Ask Iman. What's your question for us, Sheikh? My first question is, what exact reward do you get for fasting on the day of Ashura? And second question is, um, I've heard people, say, Muslims say that you should fast on the ninth and 10th day or 10th and 11th day of Muharram, but I'm not, uh, is that true? Okay, sure. Barakha Fiki, sister. Sheikh, the first part of the sister's question was, what's the reward for fasting on Ashura? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have about 20 seconds left. We'll pick it up after. Okay, alhamdulillah. The, the reward is that it is an expiation of the minor sins of the year that has passed. So the previous year, Allah forgives the sins and the major sin has to be, you know, re repentance. Repentance is compulsory for that. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Barakallah. Uh, we'll pick it up, sister, after the break, inshallah, as we're approaching the first break of today's show, which means we have already ended one segment of today's program. So, subhanAllah, just how the fast for today has flown by, just how the year's flown by, flown by uh, so has today's show. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we're we'll back uh, with you shortly. Uh, but until then, if you want to keep calling us like the sister did, all you need to do is pick up your phones and dial 0203 There's a WhatsApp number at the bottom of your screen. You can message or call us however you wish to do so. We'll be back in a few moments' time. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.
بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا حي قيم وبرحمتك الأسغيت فلا تكلني إلى نفسي ترف تعين وأصلح شأني كله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters you're watching the second part of today's show of Ask Him Alive on Iman channel in our London studio we are joined today by our dear Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Majid Alhamdulillah he's been here to answer all your questions and to take all of the questions for you and to give you clarity and to clear your doubts, bi'ithnillah. So, if you want to take part in today's show, all you need to do is to call us on 0203-515-0757. There's a WhatsApp number at the bottom of your screen below. You can message your question or you can call us directly, especially for the brothers and sisters who are abroad and elsewhere. This is your opportunity, uh, inshallah. Alternatively, we are being uh, streamed live and broadcast on our social media handles and platforms on Facebook and YouTube, as you can see on the top of your screen there. All you need to do if you want to take part or if you want to watch the stream, you can just click on the live stream there. And if you want to ask any questions, inshallah, just like the brother who will be taking uh, the question shortly uh, has, all you need to do is comment your question on the comment section below. And inshallah, we'll get through as many as we can. But of course, we'll always prioritize our live callers and the brothers and sisters who call us. Just like the sister did before the break, Sheikh, and we weren't able to complete her question. So we'll, we'll do that, inshallah. The, the rewards of our shura and... Um, is it 9, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 11, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in alhamdulillah. The thing is that uh, there's a hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his last year of his life, then he died after that. So at that time he was informed that people, the Jews and the, uh, the non-Muslims at that time, especially referring to Yahud, they are also fasting the Ashura, and it seems like we are like copying them or imitating them. So sh what should we do? Then he wished, this was his wish, he wanted to wish that uh, if Allah gives me life for the next year, then I will fast the ninth with ten. So that's uh, agreed by all the scholars of Hadith that this is, this is statement till here is all authentic. But there's another narration in Musnad Imam Ahmad, reported and collected by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi one of the great imams of our Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, in his collection of Musnad, he has mentioned hadith, which also has uh, the narration or the statement that it could be 10 and 11. So 9, 10 or 10, 11. And uh, generally understanding, he didn't fast the next year because he didn't live for the next year. So the ruling is still left with one day. So that is what we have to first, uh, you know, uh, uh, understand that. that that's the priority, that it should be only one day. And suppose if a person couldn't fast today, he cannot think that, oh, he cannot say, okay, maybe I'll fast tomorrow so I'll get the reward of Ashura. No, Ashura is only one day, which is today, alhamdulillah. So if somebody did not fast yesterday and today that person is fasting, then that's fine. And if that person wants to combine tomorrow as the 11th day, that is also permissible. But if somebody only sticks to one day, that is acceptable because that's the original ruling in Islam because that was the only fast we know from Prophet ﷺ in his life. Okay. Inshallah. And Sheikh, uh, what about the brothers and sisters uh, who ha haven't been able to fast maybe due to the time of the month or due to illness? Uh, are there any other fasts coming up um, shortly? Okay, then? mashallah, see, uh, the, since you told me that, so I, I answered the brother who called me in the morning and I told him, look, there's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where Prophet Sassam said that those people who were normal and sound and uh, they were regularly fasting and praying and paying zakat and all that. But due to certain circumstances in their life, now they cannot do any of those things, but still they wish to do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still reward them, reward them for their intention. So alhamdulillah, those brothers and sisters who wanted to fast for Ashura and due to any general reason, they could not, but in the past they were fasting. So, inshallah, they will still get the reward of their intention. Okay, inshallah. Barakah feekum, Sheikh. The next question is from Brother Rohan Ali from YouTube. And Sheikh, his question is regarding Witr prayer. So, he wants to know the most authentic opinion regarding Witr prayer. 
for he has heard, for he follows that it's mustahab, but he's heard it's obligatory and mandatory, so he wants to. Okay, there's a uh, Bara ibn al Azib, Rahmatullah ta'ala anhu, and that uh, narration is found in Sunan Nisa'i. And it is authentic narration. This issue came to him as well. This is one narration from Al Bara ibn Azib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And another hadith is by Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu an. And the another narration, again similar to this, is by Abdullah bin Umar, radiallahu an. So three Sahaba had this issue with the people. People, they were confused with regards to that the other regular prayers of Rasul Sallam, which were not the five daily prayers, the other regular like Fajr prayers, Sunnah of the Fajr and Witr. So they, 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 because they found that Rasul Sallam, even while he was traveling, he never missed them. So based on that, the people, they thought that even these two namaz, rakat, uh, prayers, which is the Sunnah of the Fajr and the Witr, they are something, if you miss them, you are sinful. It's uh, like a sin. Uh, so uh, the, when this matter came to Abdullah bin Umar, uh, Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu an, and Bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they said that they made it clearly, directly from this way, that it is not fard. It is not fard. What is fard is from another hadith of Abu Hamid and Sa'di radiallahu ta'ala anhu and another sahabi who came from countryside and he said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us that what Allah has uh, made obligatory with regards to the quantity of the prayers and what regards to the fasting and what regards to the hajj and what regards to the uh, zakat. So the Rasulullah said that when you uh, pray, you pray two rakat of fajr, four rakat of Zohar, four rakat of Asr, three rakat of Maghrib, and four rakat of Isha. That is what it is required. And then he promised that you will get Jannah for that. So after explaining the fa fasting of Ramadan, zakat once in a year, and hajj once in a lifetime, that man left saying, Ya Rasulullah, I will not increase anything in this, or I'll decrease, I'll not decrease anything from it. And he left. So Rasulullah said, if somebody wants to see a man from Jannah, look at him if he has spoken the truth. So based on this hadith mm. and the answers of Abu uh, uh, Bara ibn Azib, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abu, Abu Sayyid Khudir radiallahu anh, that witr is not fard. If you pray for the witr, you get the reward. And if you deliberately miss it or leave it, inshallah, you will not be sinful and it won't affect your obligatory prayers. But definitely, sunnahs and nafil will help you to add up to your rewards of the salah if you have got any shortcoming. That's all. Brilliant. Barakah fikum, Sheikh. We have a call on the line. Assalamu alaikum wa You're live on Ask Iman. What's your question for our Sheikh? And most importantly, what's your name and where are you calling from? Thank you, Colin. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I think we have uh, Fatima on the line. Assalamu alaikum, Fatima. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you this uh, Friday evening? Is it not bedtime for you yet? Yeah. It's, it's bedtime. Salam, Fatima, how are you? Pardon? Is it, is, is it not bedtime for you, Fatima? Or is staying up because of the summer holidays? I'm staying up because it's the summer holidays. Okay, alhamdulillah. Have you got your parents' permission? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Very good, Fatima. How old are you? Um, 11. 11, alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay, what's your question uh, for our Sheikh, uh, Fatima? Um, if you don't fast, will you get a sin? If you don't fast, will you get a sin? So are you fasting or are you not fasting? Um, I was fasting, but then I broke it because I couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it? What happened? <laughs> Allah. Like, I felt like huh? sick. You got sick? I, I felt sick, yes. Oh, you felt sick. Okay, no problem, inshallah. Sheikh, is Fatima in trouble? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There are two answers. For Fatima, Fatima, you got the reward. Don't worry. You got the reward because, like, you know, you have crossed nearly 75% of your journey of fasting, alhamdulillah. And second thing, your intention was to fast. So based on the intention, Allah will give you the reward. And no, nothing to be worried. You are not sinful. You won't be punished for that. But certainly, those people who are healthy, wealthy, and sound, tagre hai strong 
and then, then they don't A fast, then definitely they are in trouble. May, we may, we pray for them, that Allah give them, you know, opportunity and strength to fast. Because those people who have reached the age of puberty, which is like you said, 11, maybe uh, above that. So those people who are at the age of puberty and they are healthy, sound, and they don't have any medical reasons not to fast. And if they don't fast, then they are in trouble. So Fatima, look for them and advise them and say, Sheikh Abdul Majid said this about this. And inshallah, you will be rewarded. Inshallah. Inshallah. Is uh, Fatima still there on the line? Is she gone? I think she's gone now. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for calling us, uh, Fatima. Barakallahu feeki. May Allah reward you and make you a beacon of light and reward you and your family. And uh, we pray that it's uh, you get rewarded for your fast, or you're part of your fast. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, inshallah, Sheikh, we will be uh, we'll be picking up the other questions. Inshallah, after the break, uh, we're going to be. Uh, as we're approaching one. Uh, so, brothers and sisters, as you heard from uh, Sister Fatima and the other sister who called us before, we'd love to hear from you, uh, especially if you call us directly uh, and ask your questions. And also, there's YouTube and Facebook, as Brother Rohan Ali also asked his question. Barakal uh, We'll be back in a few minutes' time. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala barakatuh brothers and sisters you're watching the second half of today's show of Ask Iman live on Iman channel in our London studio we are joined by our dear Sheikh 
Sheikh Abdul Majid, alhamdulillah, who's been taking all your questions thus far and endeavor to, endeavors to do so for the remaining of our show. Uh, as you know, uh, the number to call if you'd like to ask your questions is 0203 Alhamdulillah, we've had young callers uh, as well today. So uh, I know there are lots of young brothers and sisters who are watching today, young children, young kids. Uh, so don't uh, be, be, be shy. Ask your parents permission, inshallah, and pick up the phone and speak to us and ask any questions uh, you have. We promise not to tell your parents. Um, uh, alternatively, if, you are, if you'd like to call us on the WhatsApp number at the bottom of your screen below, you can do so or you can message us your question. Uh, and failing that, we are live streaming on our Facebook and YouTube handles. So you can ask your question in the comment section below, inshallah, and we'll filter through and get through as many as possible and as many as time permits. Now, next question is very interesting, Sheikh. Are we allowed to say, oh my God, and oh my gosh? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. See, first of all, it depends upon who says that. Because normally, as a person, as a Muslim, uh, practicing Muslim, whenever certain, uh, you know, surprising things happens or a strange thing happens, then that person will say, Subhanallah. Mm. Subhanallah. And if something good happens, he would say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, if something, you know, somebody helps, he will say, Shukran, Jazakallah. Like that. So it depends upon who is saying this. But now it's a normal culture because when we are in a mixed culture, mixed, you know, different faith people are there. So I have seen most of those Christians, they say, you know, oh my God. But subhanAllah, I, I, it happened to me and I asked the person, uh, why did you say, oh my God, do you really believe in God? I said, no, it's like a statement, you know, just we say it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so this is how we have to remember that who says this and with what intention it says. So my advice to the Muslims that there is no question and there's nothing wrong if a Muslim says, oh my God, and he believes in Allah as God. So then there's no problem. Awesome. But if, if that person does not believe in Allah or does not believe in God in the first place, then it's like a cultural statement. No ruling on that. Okay. And if a person finds something shocking or surprising, they say, subhanAllah, is there a reward for this? Or is it... This shows that this person is standing back to Allah. And this shows that this person is conscious of Allah. And when you are conscious of Allah, in Allah ma'al muttaqeen. This shows that Allah is with those who have, you know, fear of Allah and those who are conscious of Allah. So Allah is with us. So that is something, it's a sign, you know, sign of a believer that when you see, uh, uh, like in India, I'm from India, you know, anything happens to a person, he will say, oh, Mary Ma, oh, Ma. So first thing he will say, my mother. Mm. <laughs> so because the mother is important to them. So this is where it reflects to the believers. Uh, Allah is the first thing for them. So alhamdulillah, they will say, oh, my God. Okay. Okay, perfect. Sheikh, Jazakallah khair. Prayer to answer your question. We have two callers on the line, so we'll go to the first one first. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi You're live on Ask Iman. What's your question for our Sheikh, and where are you calling from? Sister Malika, Malika. Wa alaikum salam. I'm calling from Luton, and my question is, um, are we allowed to fast the 11th of Ashura with the day of Ashura, and is there a hadith for that one? Do you hear that, Sheikh? I've already answered. Oh. Alhamdulillah, we can take it again, maybe briefly. Inshallah, no problem. Any other question? She's gone, Sheikh. Okay, do you want to take the second caller as yeah, well? Yeah, we'll take the second caller and then go back to this. Okay. Inshallah. Uh, we'll go to the other caller now, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You're live on, on Ask Iman. What's your question for our Sheikh? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Shakir Ali. I'm from East London. Shakir Ali from East London. Ahlan, welcome. What's your question for us, Sheikh? Uh, it's a question about reading Surah Kaf on Friday. When is the best time to read? If you're after Maghrib on Thursday, time starts up until Asr on Friday. And uh, another question is really Surah Dukhan on Thursday night. I just want to know any reality involved in getting reward reading on Thursday night Surah Dukhan where 70,000 angels ask for your forgiveness. I just want to know the reality in it. Okay, if it's authentic or not, you mean? Yes, that's true. Okay, inshallah. Barakha feekum. Thank you for your call. And inshallah, we'll have a... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, with regards to the reading of the Quran, definitely there's no time limit for it. There's no uh, time, there's no place. 
That means, alhamdulillah, except toilet and graveyards, you can read Quran at any time, at, in any place, alhamdulillah. This is one thing. But there are specific narrations, uh, you know, encouraged by Rasulullah Sallam. One of them is reading of Surah Al-Kahf, you know, uh, on Friday. So generally, generally all the narrations, all the narrations, they speak about reading of Surah Al-Kahf on Friday. So based on that, it is understood it starts from the sunrise of the Fajr till the Ghurub al-Shams. So that is called Friday, day, D-A-Y. But Islamic calculation, the day starts when it is the Ghurub al-Shams of the night before that. So that means the, after the sunset of Thursday, the Friday is, is uh, to be understood as it started. So that way, and it is a flexible thing, mashallah, in Islam. It's, uh, everything is permissible in that case. You can start reading right from the Maghrib of Thursday, after you have prayed your Maghrib, from that till the next uh, Asr of the next uh, day, which is Friday. It is allowed, inshallah. You can read all of it. You can read first 10 verses, or you can read the last 10 verses. These, these are all proven from the authentic sources. With Surah Al-Dukhan, hadith is da'if. As far as your other question, regular study uh, reading of the Surah Al-Mulk is there, that every night Rasulullah used to read Surah Al-Mulk. So alhamdulillah, that is really, uh, you know, uh, authentic, and that's from the Sunnah of Rasulullah When Sheikh says da'if, meaning is weak. Da'if means that the information that came to us through Rasulullah from Rasulullah to us, in between the chain of narrators and those who are narrating this, they are not reliable people. So we don't take as authentic. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, we have another caller on the line, so we'll take the caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're live on Ask Iman. What's your question for our Sheikh? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, uh, I want to, I have a few questions sure. uh, regarding the first salah. If you forget to the, the, uh, read the shahud in between of the two rakats, so we need to do a full salah again or just to do the sada sahab? This is first question. You forgot, to, you forgot to complete your tashahud, yes? Rakat, and then need to do the shahud, but I forget to do it and start third rakat. Yeah, you went to the third rakat, yes. Yeah. And then you completed your prayers. The remaining. Uh, but as soon as I stand up, I remember, oh God, I forget uh, the shahud. And what did you do after you remembered? Um, Sajda Sahab. No, no, you immediately went back to Sajda Sahab or you continued your third rakat and No, no, the... I, I continued the third rakat, fourth rakat, because I don't know, I need to okay, sit okay. down quickly. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. and uh, the second question, because I heard, uh, I don't know when I or where, they said if we, you are alone yourself, you need to do the shahud, uh, just the shahud, and then do salam and do the sadai uh, sahab. No, sorry, wrong. Uh, if you are alone, you need to complete your uh, the shahud and then do one salam and do the again sajda. But when it's uh, imam doing, he need to do half the shahud and do salam. So what I need to do? This okay. is second. And third question is regarding Vita. Uh, you know, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu narrated, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa do two rakat for Vita and they then do the third separately. So can we speak in between of these three rakat? I mean, two and after. Speak. Or we... Yeah. Speak in what sense? You want to go and uh, have a tea break, <laughs> break for the tea or what, no, what is no, it? No, 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 uh, no. Because uh, mostly we do together the Isha Salah. So mostly my boy starts something, you know. No, you, <laughs> so you, I need to you say. Should, yeah, you should not have the break. You should immediately after two rakat, you should continue. Yeah, I do the same. Okay, alhamdulillah. But some need to read loud like a mother. <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With regards to the tashahud, yes, alhamdulillah. Tashahud is something that if you miss, then you have to do the sajdat al-sahu. Sajdat al-sahu, according to the authentic ahadith, and alhamdulillah, with due respect to other school of thoughts, uh, it should be done. Uh, at the end, you have finished at tahiyat the rood, 
and dua, then you do, do two more sajdas completely, whether you are with the imam, and if, the, if you are with the imam with particular school of thought, then you have to follow him. You can't uh, use your method. You have to follow him because imam is appointed for you, even if he's Hanafi imam, Maliki imam, Shafi imam, Hanbali imam, you have to follow him till you end the namaz with him. So, but that's, but when you are yourself alone, or you yourself as an imam, then this is the authentic hadith which I'm referring to, that Rasulullah did miss his tashahud, and this is how he has done, that he has completed a tahiyat, he has completed his darud, he has completed his dua, and then he made two more sajdas complete, and then he gave salam on both the sides. This is one way. Yeah, Sheikh, we, we'll pick it up after the break, inshallah. Uh, Barakah fikum uh, for all the brothers and sisters who called uh, and asked their questions. We'll be back for one more segment, inshallah. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few moments' time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.
بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters viewers at home and elsewhere you're watching the final segment of today's episode of Ask Iman live on Iman channel I am here joined in the London studio by our dear Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Majid and he has been going through all of the questions that you posed to him thus far and endeavour to do so as we have a very very busy schedule uh, as a very busy segment of one um, uh, before the end of today's show inshallah we have a lot of callers waiting to have their questions answered uh, so if you want to be the next caller um, then all you need to do is call us on 0203-515-0757 there's a whatsapp number at the bottom of your screen below you can call us there or you can also message us but we'll always prioritize our callers inshallah so the first caller i think is brother abdullah Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala, brother Abdullah, how are you? Uh, what's your question for our Sheikh? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Uh, inshallah, just one small question. Sure. Uh, so the question is that young Muslims these days, they've been brought up in a British society, right? right? You know, all British people around them. And it's become quite common for young Muslims to use the term Jesus Christ. So it's similar to the other question with, uh, oh my God. Sure. So yeah, is it... Is it uh, haram for these young Muslims to be using this term? Does it come underneath shirk, uh, like minor shirk? Or right. is it permissible? To say that Jesus Christ like that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. No, it is not permissible. And it is the responsibility for the parents to educate that person. The, alhamdulillah. The only big difference that we have from, between Muslims and Christians is Jesus. So if Jesus is said by, as, as a Muslim young man, my uh, Jesus, or Jesus, or God, God, or something like that, what was the statement? It's more like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like oh, that. Jesus Christ. No, this is, again, we, are, we have to educate our children. And knowingly, after you have done your far part to educate this young boy, then, alhamdulillah, and after that, if he does, then he's committing shirk. But it's, it's not a good thing to do. Yes, it's not allowed. It's not okay, inshallah. Uh, Abdullah, brother Abdullah, I don't know if you're still on the line with us. You don't have any other questions, inshallah. Uh, in that case, we'll get to our next caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're live on Ask Iman. Ismail, beautiful name. What's your question for our Sheikh? Wa alaikum salam, brother. How are you doing? I'm Alhamdulillah. Good. Alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm good. May Allah accept your prayers. Amin, amin, amin. Go ahead, brother Ismail. I have, one, I have a question, inshallah. Go ahead. The Sheikh I was saying that uh, it's not allowed uh, to read the Quran in two places, in the toilet and the graveyard. Yes, what's the question? From my upbringing, yeah, from my upbringing, when we go to the graveyard, we normally read the Quran, so I don't know. Yeah, alhamdulillah, uh, so if, if, if you are asking the question whether it is allowed or not, definitely, mashallah, you are a young man. And since you have seen your people doing this, it is now your responsibility to check it, what Prophet did and what was the purpose of the Quran. Quran is revealed for the people who are alive. The whole 23 years of uh, Prophet's uh, reading of the Quran and teaching of the Quran was to the people who are alive. And it's a message, a life message, eternal message till the end of the time. So those people who have died, they will, you, your du'as is uh, enough for them. Because when you make du'a for them, Allah will accept your du'as. But the Quran is a message, a life message for those people, for the guidance. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudal linnasi wa bayinati min al-huda wal furqan that in the month of Ramadan, in the night of Laylatul Qadr, Allah has revealed this Quran, which is a guidance for the whole mankind, Muslims and non-Muslims. So it's a guidance for the whole mankind. And mankind means alive, people, those who are alive. And also those people who were alive during the lifetime of Prophet Sallallahu and they were not listening to the Quran. And when the Quran was read, they turned their back. Then Rasulullah was told by Allah, uh, they are like dead people and the dead people cannot listen to you. So ref that shows that reading of the Quran does not actually benefit the people who are in the graves. graves. And alhamdulillah, that is not the place where we should. And Prophet did say in the authentic hadith, read Quran in your house and don't make it graveyard. Very clear. That read Quran in your house and don't make it graveyards. Mm -hmm. So reading of the Quran is changing the graveyard into a house of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Barakafikum Sheikh. Jazakum Hair Brother Ismail for your question. We pray that answer your question, inshallah. We have Mrs. Khan next. Uh, welcome to the show. What's your question for our Sheikh? Um, how are you? 
الحمد لله بارك الله فيكم. الحمد لله yes. Yes, sir, I have uh, two questions. Um, what we give sadqa for uh, Hussain alayhi salam uh, because today was Ash and can we do that? Secondly, sec sadqa for Ahlul Bayt is haram. Oh. Any Ahlul Bayt, whether it is Ali radiallahu anhu, Fatima, or Hassan, or Hussein, or the children of uh, Abbas radiallahu anhu, or Abdullah bin Abbas, all the Ahlul Bayt, Sadqa for them is haram. If you've done it, uh, then what is... What? Doesn't matter, inshallah. If you have done it without knowing it, then alhamdulillah, you will get the reward of the sadqa, but it won't go to them. And your next question, sister? Question is, if you see dead body in your dream, what does it mean? Dead body means what? Somebody has died? Yes. And that person is still alive in your uh, understanding? Yes. Yeah, okay, alhamdulillah. If you see that regularly, then you should try to inquire about that person's health. It's an indication. Yeah, but uh, in, t in terms of dream, sister, uh, consult your local imam or sheikh. Inshallah. Uh, as it's a general uh, question and answer show, inshallah, nothing uh, for specific <laughs> cases. Uh, we pray that answer your question, inshallah. Anyways, we have uh, the next caller, Brother Hassan, I believe. Assalamu alaikum. You're live well, on the Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Well, alhamdulillah. How are you? Oh, mashallah, Ustaz. Shabdul Majid. Kaifah Halik. Alhamdulillah. Halla Mansoub and Diamond. Mashallah. Mashallah. Barakallah Fika, Shah. Zakallah. Rabbi Jazik. May Allah reward you for your... Amin, Amin, Amin. We love the way you answer and all that. Jazakallah. Barakallah Fika, Alhamdulillah. Oh, yeah, Ustaz. The question, Shah, is... There was, in our area where we live in East London, there was a lot, several days, I think a week ago, there was a, uh, one, one, one of the imams was late in the Salah, and he recited Surah Fatiha properly, but the second Surah, what he was reciting, he made a mistake, and there were three people behind him trying to correct him. <laughs> he was a young imam, mashallah, and he got confused. So rather than correcting the verse, he made more mistakes, because all of them <laughs> spoke one time. Right? <laughs> and okay. it, Shah instead of saying wala, uh, wow, lam, and alif, he said la. So, as you know, la in Arabic means no. So, yeah. for some reason, they assumed that he spoke in the Salah. So, they reported that to the, you know, the senior imam. imam. He was a young boy and he was trying to help them. And uh, So, what's your question, brother? The or question, the question, the question is... Um, the Imam said that Salah uh, must be repeated. So, wasn't seeing as the Fatah was correct, Shah Majid, wasn't the Salah valid? The Salah is valid, Alhamdulillah. Mistake in the Quran does not invalidate the Namaz. But Alhamdulillah, this is where the Sunnah comes. And that is really, we don't follow the Sunnah. Rasulullah has said that those people who are learned people, they should stand behind the Imam. So, in case if Imam makes mistake, then they can correct it. And alhamdulillah, the brothers who are correcting him, uh, the imam, they should make sure that not all three of them are reading something and, you know, correcting the imam. So even uh, it happened with me once of the, uh, one, one of the occasions I was reading the prayer and I forgot, you know, the, because some verses were too, uh, similar and I went to, I read one verse and that the next verse was a different surah I was reading and I mixed up with another surah. And when I got the, you know, reply from the behind me, there were three different, four different replies. I got confused myself mm -hmm. that we, what was I was reading. So, alhamdulillah, in that case, we should, uh, it doesn't invalidate the prayer. Alhamdulillah, it should be clear. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Pray that answer your question, brother. Hassan, uh, we have our last caller of today's show. I think it's a, a very young brother, Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Ibrahim. What's your question? How are you? Alhamdulillah, we are fine. I think we've lost Ibrahim. <laughs> Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim's question, Sheikh, is what good deeds can we do? MashaAllah. He's five years old. Yeah, MashaAllah. Uh, make your mom happy all the time. Hug her, kiss her, and ask her mom, what do you want? What, what can I do for you? And once your mom is happy, then go to your dad. Hug him, kiss him, and ask him, Dad, what can I do for you? Then you have elder brother, younger brother, elder sister, or if you have baby in your house, 
look after the baby and play, and then, alhamdulillah, see that the baby is always smiling. These are the best things right now you can do, inshallah. Inshallah. Sheikh. We have about a minute left, Sheikh. Is there any parting words that you'd like to share with our brothers and sisters? Yes, alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, life is very short, alhamdulillah. And as Muslims, we should fulfill the criteria of when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah means that we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability. And our life and our deen is, religion is not different. Whatever we do in our life and according to Islam, Allah will reward us. So our life is this. Alhamdulillah, we have to be good to others and we should not expect good from them. If they don't do it, that does not mean that if you do good, then only I will do good. That's wrong concept in Islam. Islam says you are Muslim. You have submitted your will to Allah. So do something that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do good, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah. Barakallahu feekum, Shaykh. Salaam Mahira for all of our brothers and sisters who called us and asked their questions via Facebook and YouTube uh, and via live calls. And we'd like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from you and accept your fast for the brothers and sisters who are fasting today and those who are not fasting today. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward our Shaykh for his family and for everyone uh, who made the production possible, including the brothers uh, at the back. Uh, until tomorrow, 8 p.m. on Ask Iman, we'll see you again. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.